A 2007 study in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism revealed that a substantial drop in U.S. men's testosterone levels since the 1980s have been occurring, with the average levels declining by about 1% per year. Think about that, 1% per year. If you don't want to take from that, you can go to another article that says that the sperm count in Western men has dropped over 50%, 50% since 1973. There are article after article online talking about how testosterone, sperm count, etc., is just dropping. There are articles entitled things like, you're only half the man your grandfather was. Half, like, and that's not exaggeration, literally, 50% of the testosterone. This is a huge, incredible crisis, and I encourage you all to research it yourself and look into this crisis in literal masculinity. It's literally in the decline. What are the causes of this? Some say it's the sedentary lifestyle. Uh, some say uh, obesity, some say it's the meat that we're eating is, has too much hormones in it. Allah Adam, I'm not gonna, you can do your own research. But the fact of the matter is, masculinity is on the decline, rapid decline. Not, we're not talking about small amounts. What are the results? Men are avoiding challenges. Men are avoiding challenges. Usually, you know, testosterone makes you a little bit more aggressive, and obviously if you channel that in the right way, then you discipline yourself, push yourself to do great things. But subhanAllah, we find intellectually, physically, and emotionally, men seem to be bailing out. Intellectually, men are dropping out of universities. The statistics on that are very, very clear. Physically, men are not physically active. They're not exercising like they used to. Again, this is dropping levels of testosterone. And furthermore, emotionally, men are less and less interested in the challenge of raising many kids. They would much rather just say, you know what, I'll sleep around with this one, that one, jump from one woman to the next. But in terms of settling down, having a family, and having multiple children, no thank you. Just one or two kids max, not interested in anything more than that. There's an Arabic proverb that says, Al-Himmatu Nisful Muru'ati, that ambition is half of manliness. Now, clearly, if manliness and testosterone and sperm count and so on, if these things have literally dropped by half in the last 50 years, then yes, ambition drops with it, exactly proving, uh, exactly describing the stats that I'm offering. If that wasn't enough, we know that the LGBTQ uh, uh, community seems to be conducting a full court press targeting our children's school curriculum, teaching children to question their God-given biology. Are you sure you're a boy? Maybe you're a girl. And if they get past that, okay, fine, you're a boy, but are you sure maybe you're not gay? It's possible. Okay, fine, maybe you're a boy and maybe you're straight, but it's okay to be weak, it's okay to be lazy, it's okay to be unhealthy. They call this the positivity, body positivity movement. I don't know why they call it a movement, they're not encouraging movement. It seems to be the only movement with no movement. The Prophet ﷺ said something very interesting about not end times. The Prophet ﷺ said, and wallahu alam, this, this seems to apply, and Allah knows best. Authentic hadith in Sahih Bukhari. من أشرات الساعة أن يقل العلم ويظهر الجهل ويظهر الزنا وتكثر النساء وتكثر وتكثر النساء ويقل الرجال حتى يكون لخمسين امرأة القيم الواحد. That from the signs of the hour of the last days, knowledge will decrease and ignorance will increase. This is specifically with regards to علم of Islam. We, we, we want to attend our halaqat, we want to learn our durus, we want to learn our fiqh and our aqidah, we want to learn the halaqat that we're offering in terms of tafsir and so forth. We should be learning these things, but unfortunately the numbers are small. This can refer to Islamic ilm, but this can also refer to ilm in general. As I mentioned a second ago, it seems that universities, men are just dropping out. We don't want to discipline ourselves and learn more. We don't, want to, we don't have that ambition, that drive to push for higher education. It seems to be lacking. So knowledge decreases, ignorance prevails, then there will be a prevalence of zina, of fornication. Why? You don't want to marry, have a family, settle down, have lots of kids. No, no, just jump from one to the next, avoid responsibility. Why? Because that takes too much uh, you know, ambition. I don't have that ambition. And then what's next? Then the number of women, uh, then the Prophet goes on to say what? Women will increase in number and men will decrease in number, so much so that for 50 women there will be one dependable man. You know, I'm sure that the Sahaba, when they heard this type of hadith, they thought there must be a great war that's going to take place, that all the men are going to be killed. There's going to be 50 women for one man. What a, a scary ratio to have. And you know what? Maybe that is true. Maybe in the future that will happen. I can't, I, I, Allah knows. Or maybe it's possible that testosterone just keeps on dropping till the whole concept of a man starts to disappear off the face of the earth. So to the point that there, for one man, there's 50 women. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. 
It seems to be, you know, physically we are changing. And so again, going back to intellectually, physically, and emotionally, these seem to be spot on. Two of the best ways that we can increase testosterone as men is what? Exercise and sunlight. Get out there. Exercise. Young men, I'm speaking to you. Move a little. It's okay. The sun rays, they're, they're good for you. They, inshallah ta'ala, you can get outside, breathe a little, run a little. Don't be addicted to your devices all the time, sitting in your parents' basement and just playing away. And furthermore, you want to minimize stress and have high quality sleep. Now, how can you minimize stress? SubhanAllah, what do you think this deen of Islam does for you? When you pray five times a day and calm yourself and focus on Allah, when you are constantly in the remembrance of Allah, making dhikrullah, what do you think that does? Having tawakkul, depending upon your Lord, it reduces your levels of stress so that you can work out and be strong, but at the same time be centered and focused. This combination is going to increase your manliness, inshallah ta'ala, in the best of ways. I remember when I was young, when I was a young kid, I'd look at like, you know, the Shaolin monk or the samurai and think to myself, this is the perfect combination. On the one hand, you have someone who is calm and stoic and deeply spiritual and pensive, but at the same time, you have somebody who is strong and disciplined and dangerous and powerful. And I thought, subhanAllah, that's the perfect combination. And then, alhamdulillah, years go by and I learn about Islam. And I get to read about the Sahaba. Ibn Kathir, in his book, Bidayah wa Nihaya, he describes how one of Heraclius' men was captured by the, by the Sahaba, and then eventually he was let go. And then when that Roman fighter, he returned back to Heraclius, Heraclius asked him, tell me, describe to me these Sahaba, I want to know what they're like. And he said, I'm going to tell you about them like as if you're looking at them. Then the very next description, the first description he gives is what? They are warriors by day, they are monks by night. And I thought, subhanAllah, that's, 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 that's exactly it. That's what we want. The physical discipline, but spiritual centeredness. This is what really creates and develops our testosterone, our manliness. This is what we are lacking. And I would dream of a day where we could combine these two, of both the spiritual discipline and focus of the masjid, along with the physical training of the gym. And then, alhamdulillah, I was able to move to the U.S., and all of my Canadian family and friends were warning me, saying, you know the statistics about the U.S., the levels of obesity, well, you know the type of food that they eat, all the junk food, be careful, you're going to become like them. <laughs> and so I said, no, no, I'm confident. As long as we can combine the gym and the masjid together, then inshallah ta'ala, that spirituality, as well as physical discipline, this is going to keep us strong. I just need to get a lot of young men around me to push me, and they, I could push them, and we could develop together. And alhamdulillah, this masjid has been amazing. We built the gym, and mashallah, we have gener generous donors who put the money for the beautiful mats that we have, and we hired trainers from outside, professionals, for both stand-up game, taekwondo, and ground game, uh, uh, jujitsu. So you know how to fight both in terms of striking and in terms of, you know, ground game, uh, grappling, uh, etc. But subhanAllah, it's very difficult. I always thought it would be so easy. I thought the moment that we started this up, every young man is going to say, you're combining spiritually, the spirituality as well as physicality. This combination is being offered in the masjid. I can come and pray my sal salawat, memorize my, my Quran. I can go to the lounge, eat something, maybe do my studies for homework. Then I can go to the gym and get tougher and stronger. That's it. That's the golden combination. This is what I've been dreaming about for years. I thought it would be the easiest thing to get young men to commit. What do I find? They all talk, big talk. After about one or two weeks, they quit and quit and quit. Where's the physical discipline? Where's the strength? SubhanAllah, it is quite scary. So fathers, I have some questions for you. To all the fathers, I have some questions. Do you know how much your son is supposed to weigh according to his height? It's actually a very simple question. You know there's metrics for these things. You can actually figure this stuff out. Do you know how much your son is supposed to weigh according to his height? Do you know how many push-ups he's supposed to be able to do for his age, for his size? What about pull-ups? What about sit-ups? Do you have any idea? Do you care? Do you care at all? Based on what I'm noticing, nobody knows, nobody cares. It's not even a, a, a minor back thought. It's not even there. It's very, very scary. How long can your son run until he quits? Do you know what he's supposed to be able to run? How, do you know how long? How many minutes? How many miles? How much is he supposed to be able to run until he can't take it anymore? What is normal for his age group? Do you know? Do you care? As a father, isn't this your job? Is it not your job? 
seem like pretty straightforward questions. SubhanAllah, as an imam, you get to deal with divorce cases. Two of the most common reasons women seem to want to divorce their husbands, in whatever little experience I have, it's either he's not the leader financially or he's not the leader spiritually. He's not a leader. He's not taking the lead. Either he's not financially the leader, but he's not taking care of the family, he can't provide, so they get sick of him. That seems pretty straightforward, seems pretty reasonable. Or he's not the spiritual leader. The sister notices that either he's addicted to haram things, he's in, she encourages him to, towards salah, or to the Qur'an, or to the masjid. She encourages him, but he just resists, or he neglects, he gets upset, and she's afraid that he's going to set a bad example for the children, so eventually she wants to get out of this bad situation. In short, he lacks discipline. Abu Huraira, who he said what? Su'ila Rasulullah The Prophet was once asked, Men akramun nasi. Who are the most honorable? You know, men, I want to be honored in my house. I want to be the man of the house. Okay, good. That's a very natural desire to want to have, to be the, head, the leader of the household. Fine. You want to be akramun nas. You want to have that honor, right? Good. So who are the most honorable people? Qala, the Prophet says, atqahum lillah. Those who have the most taqwa. Where's your discipline? Those who have taqwa. Taqwa is self-restraint. The ability to say no. Do you have any discipline? If no, then what are you doing? Saying, well, why am I not respected? I should be the man. I should be honored when I come in the house. You have no discipline. You don't have the discipline to financially provide. You don't have the discipline to spiritually provide. And now you're demanding more respect. Are you joking? It doesn't work like that. Leadership requires patience and discipline. Leadership requires patience and discipline. And what do phones do? Phones give you instant gratification. So if we are raising our young kids, spending years getting used to this instant gratification of their phones and of all their devices, then they get married. And now the wife and the kids require patience and leadership. Do you really think that they're trained for that? Do you think that they're built for that? Do you think that they're ready for that? The answer is obviously no. And then you see the divorce rate. And then you wonder, how did this happen? If your son is throwing a tantrum every time he gets put under a little bit of stress, what do you think he's gonna ha what's going to happen when he's the head of a household? When he has wife and kids that are looking up to him? How can he handle that stress? If your son starts something, something challenging, like, for instance, the martial arts or the sports, basketball, soccer, whatever the case is, if your son starts something challenging this summer, for instance, or any, any, any sort of discipline, and then he quits the moment it gets hard, do you care? Or do you just support him regardless, my sweet angel baby, I have to take care of him, no, no worry about it, it was tough for you, that's okay, you can quit, and you can start something else, I'll pay for it, and you can quit that too, and then you can start something else and quit, and I'll pay for that too. What are we doing with our kids? And then guess what happens? You, you're developing what? You're enabling this quitting attitude. And then he gets married, has a few kids, breaks up the family, and then you're asking the question, I don't know what happened, really? You don't know what happened. You enabled the whole thing. You develop them in this weak way. SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ said to one of his companions, Ashaj Abdul Qais, beautiful hadith, Radha he said to this companion, he said, Inna fika khaslatain yuhibbuhum Allah al hilm wal anah. He said, You possess two qualities which are beloved to Allah Ta'ala. You have forbearance and composure. We know the hadith that the strongest man, Laysa al Shadid, the surah, the strongest man is not the one who can wrestle. Yes, of course, I do want us to be strong physically. That's definitely important. But that doesn't mean that makes you a man. An elephant has lots of strength. Big deal. Physical strength is not... The, it's, it's, it's necessary to be healthy, to be strong, but that's not the only factor. You need to be able to be composed and calm in times of stress. And the way you do that is by subjecting yourself to stressful environments like sports, like exercise, like, like martial arts where a guy's trying to take your head off and you have to be focused and say, how can I get out of this situation? This makes men out of us, inshallah ta'ala. And this is the summertime where you're supposed to be outside, you're supposed to be moving, you're supposed to be physically challenging yourself and getting tougher. Now's the time. And so I want the fathers to really ask themselves, are they concerned at all? I'll continue the second khutbah. صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سيدنا كثيرا. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Fathers, you need to teach your boys to embrace their masculinity. Father-son bonding should be done with something challenging. Show him how to persevere through difficult tasks. This this summer is a perfect time to do exactly that. عيد الأضحى is coming up. Take your son to slaughter an animal. Let him see death with his own eyes. Let him know that death is coming for all of us. Let him understand the realities of death. Stop coddling our kids. 
Tell your son, you're going to have to one day wash my body. Explain this to your son. Let him know that he's going to be responsible for the household. He's going to be responsible for mom and the girls once he's gone. Let him understand this reality. Teach your boys to stand for what they believe in, regardless of the outcome. Teach them to fear nobody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huda alayhi salam said to his people, and we know that the people of Ad were warriors. They were the most dangerous people. What did he say to them? Fakiduni jami'an thumma la tunzirun. Inni tawakaltu ala Allah rabbi wa rabbikum. Ma min dabatin illa huwa akhidun bi nasiyatiha. Subhanallah. That even though this Prophet Hud was going up against the most dangerous people, Aad, that's what they were known for, being tyrants, bullying everybody else, oppressing people. What does he say to them? He says, oh, you think your deities are going to affect me negatively? Your deities are going to fight me or, or harm me because I'm speaking against your, your false gods? He says, so plot against me altogether. You and all of your deities, all of you fight me all at once. Don't give me any... Don't give, give me any room, any leeway. Don't give, give me any respite. Don't give me a, a heads up. Nothing. Just attack. Do whatever you can. This is tawakkul. Then he, says, he even says it. Indeed, I have relied upon Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. There is no creature but that he holds it by the forelock. Are we teaching our kids to stand up for what we believe in? To speak the truth, regardless of what the outcome is? Do you teach your son? We all got to go sometime, son. So speak the truth. In da'wah, it's either a civilized discussion, and alhamdulillah in Islam we have the best arguments. So may the best man win, inshallah ta'ala, in a civilized discussion, we win. But if they don't want a civilized discussion, that's fine too. You can attack and may the best man win. In both cases, it's either victory or martyrdom. So it doesn't make a difference. This is what, unfortunately, we don't see the fathers having this quality, this discipline. This desire to speak the truth, to talk to those neighbors, co-workers, teaching the kids to talk to their classmates, speak the truth, stand up for what you believe in. Again, where's the discipline? Where's the desire to overcome challenges? Where's the manliness? Yes, we know the Prophet said what? Sharru ma fi rajulin, shuhun hali'un wa jubnun khali'un. The worst, the, the, the worst of qualities that a man can have is anxious stinginess. You're so cheap, you want to hold on to every dollar. And then uninhibited cowardice. You're completely afraid. This is unacceptable. We should be teaching our kids to be strong and brave. Teach them that women and children can throw tantrums. Okay, fine. But you are the leader of the household. Which means that you need to keep calm and stay focused even in the middle of a crisis. Most divorce cases, subhanAllah, they involve a man throwing a tantrum like a child. Getting mad, screaming, punching, doing all sorts of... It's, it's embarrassing how many cases we have of this. Look, to all the married young men or men that are going to get married, either she can learn and she can listen and she can improve, so you have to be patient, speak calmly, even if it's a long process, this is your family, that's option A. Or option B is, she's not going to learn, she's never going to improve, so just divorce. Stop trying to change a woman that you know is an evil woman, walk away. In both cases, the whole concept of throwing a tantrum, breaking things, threatening, hitting things, hitting the walls, whatever the case is, what's gonna happen? You get mad, lose your temper, she calls the police, the kids are traumatized, what, where is any good in this? So yes, we need to understand that masculinity is to remain calm and to have discipline, to be the caretaker of your household to discipline yourself and challenge yourself and yet to remain calm, to, have spiritual, to be spiritually sound. And alhamdulillah, this summer and this masjid is the perfect place to do so. Fathers, please pay attention to the way your sons are spending their days and make masculinity a priority. The effort to emasculate our men is a real problem. But you know what? Actually, we actually have at least one good thing going for us. At least we have the word emasculation. SubhanAllah, I fear for the sisters because there seems to be a war, a war on femininity as well, which is a huge problem. But SubhanAllah, there is no word, there is no equivalent of emasculation to defeminate. It's not even a word. You see my point? SubhanAllah, at least we understand that when people try to make men take away their masculinity, it's called emasculation. There is no female equivalent. So SubhanAllah, when you can't even define a problem, it's much harder to solve the problem. So SubhanAllah, I think that there's a big challenge amongst the sisters as well. There's not even a word for it, SubhanAllah. But yes, at the end of the day, the war on traditional gender norms seems to be in full effect. 
And if we can embrace the beauty of both masculinity and femininity, inshallah, amongst the men and amongst the women, respectively, then inshallah ta'ala, I do believe that we can have exemplary families, have large families, beautiful families, where there's structure in the home. And from that, you develop beautiful communities. And when we can have beautiful and healthy communities, then inshallah ta'ala, we become exemplary. So the plot to destroy actually becomes the opposite. It only makes us stand out more, and it only draws more people to Islam. That is going to be the goal. So may Allah ta'ala make us men, men. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us embrace all the most beautiful qualities and characteristics of masculinity. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who are disciplined, who are calm in the face of crisis, who are strong, not just physically, but emotionally, intellectually. We, uh, we have ulu al himma. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who have high aspirations. We always aim for the best instead of just getting by on the bare minimum. May Allah ta'ala make us involved in our sons' lives, making sure that we are disciplining them, pay att paying attention to their strength, to their emotional uh, needs, making sure that they understand what marriage is all about. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who can develop families that we take care of them, that the whole world can be falling apart, but we hold the family together. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen.